Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing and today we're going to be running through the Brother Innovus A-Series machines. Now, with the A-Series, there are three machines in the range, and they start with the one on my, my right here, which is the A-16, and that's basically the entry-level machine, and uh, really simple to use, and we'll be starting with that one, and we'll be talking about all the common features. Once we move from that, we'll go to the A-80, which then adds a whole new feature set for you, and obviously is a little bit more expensive, but all these machines are priced incredibly uh, well and affordable. After we've done that, we'll move across to the A150, which is the top of the range in the A-series models, and uh, it's really quite a fun machine. So we'll cover all those three machines during this video. But I also have a fourth machine over here on my left, and that's the NV180, and we'll have a separate video on that all together. Why do I have that when it's not an A-series? It is actually the same technology as far as the chassis of the machine, because all these machines have a metal chassis. Same machine, and it also comes with an embroidery unit. So that's the reason I have that here, because if you're looking at one of these three guys, it's definitely worth having a look at the NV180 on our website as well. So um, fantastic piece of equipment. Anyway, let's get into it. We'll start down with the A16. Okay, so we're looking at the A16 model in the A-series range, and the first thing I'd like to say is there's a lot of commonality between this, the A80, and the A150. So pretty much everything I show you on this machine will carry across to the other two models. So pay particular attention if you're thinking of the, you know, the more expensive one or the more featured one, I'm not gonna show the same features again on that one. So we're gonna go through the, um, the fundamentals first. Now, firstly, let's look at the machine. It's, it's a good size machine. It's not the smallest machine on the market, but it's not a large machine. It's very compact in the sense that if you have to put it away when you finish sewing, it's fantastic size for that. It does come with a dust cover or a soft dust cover just to keep the dust off it. But the thing that is deceiving is the machine is a little bit heavier than you might expect. So um, it is a full metal chassis machine as are all the A-series machines. So it has some real strength and stability. Um, DC motors in these make them very powerful. So you can sew through heavy work at any speed and that's a real advantage. So let's have a look at the, um, the basic uh, construction of the machine. You'll notice here you've got a speed slide control. So one of the key features on most modern computerized machines, and this is computerized, is that you don't need to use a foot control. And while it comes with a foot control as standard, many people opt to use the start stop button and uh, that's becoming increasingly popular. But with that, you can control the speed right from the very slowest inching speed up to a, a full speed, which is quite fast. You'll also notice that you've got a few extra dials here, obviously the start stop button, the reversing button, so it's a nice simple soft touch reverse, a reinforcement or a fixing stitch, which is for locking off stitches at the end, of, particularly at the end of pattern stitches, and um, without having a bulky sort of back tack stitch and a needle up down button. So very easy, big buttons, easy to deal with. Across here, you'll see we've got our stitch selector. Now, while it's a dial, it's, um, it's very easy to operate. And it, on, the, uh, on the little sort of window here, it shows you what stitch you have selected. So for example, I'm on stitch number one, which is a left position straight stitch. It's telling me what foot to use, the J foot. So whenever you change to a particular stitch type, it will give you that information it will automatically set the stitch length and the width positions. And while it's automatic, you do have a button here to control that. So you can make the stitches longer or narrower or wider, whatever you want for that particular task. But more often than not, and, and most people who are looking at these kind of you know, entry level machines, it's good to have a machine that automatically sets everything for you so you don't have to think about it. So by just moving that dial, it will go to the next stitch. If I wanted a zigzag, for instance, I'd just go to stitch number four. It sets the width and length, and as I said, I can control that. So really nothing to it as far as functioning uh, functionality. Uh, up, up, up the top here, you've got your bobbin winder, we've got the threading spool, uh, diagrams on how to thread it. This is your thread tension dial, and uh, generally between three and five is where you're going to have it set. I've got it set on four. Really, if you're using good quality thread, rarely do you need to change that, just leave it where it is, but you do have control. Now, um, we might go ahead and thread the machine, and uh, no, actually before we do, we'll just take this little free arm uh, plate off. That is your little accessory storage as well, 
and that opens out and you've got all your accessories in there. I should show you what comes with this particular machine. Um, a basic range of little feet. In fact, um, we've got a buttonhole foot. I'll throw all them out on the, on the front here and we'll go through them quickly. We've got an over-edging foot or an overcasting foot, like overlocking. We've got a blind hem foot. We've got a button sewing foot, a zipper foot, a button hole foot. It will come with four bobbins, little tiny accessory screwdrivers, seam ripper, a twin needle spool pin, the little thread caps that hold the spools on, a twin needle and a standard set of needles, cleaning brush and a little thread net. So pretty much everything you need for all your basic sewing. And you also obviously get an instruction book uh, there is a sheet in there which actually has all the um, accessories that come standard with it. So you get that, you get a little quick start guide to threading the bobbins and just getting the machine up and running very quickly because everyone's impatient. As soon as you get out the box you want to sew on it. The operation manual, it's well worth having a read through these things. They do, they are helpful, they are well written. Brother do a great um, uh, user manual. And, uh, and there is a little um, sewing project, projects uh, book that gives you a few simple projects to do, simple instructions, and that comes standard in the box as well. So now let's go ahead and thread the machine. Now I'm using a thread called Resant. It's a really good quality thread, but any good quality thread is fine. And the thread goes on this little spool here, and we're just going to pop that on there. Now you do get what, the, what we call thread lead-offs or caps, and they just go on there and serve to actually hold the thread in place. And uh, once that's there, I'm going to wind a bobbin actually because uh, I've got a bobbin here with me at the moment. So I'm going to take that, uh, that bobbin there, pop it on that little spindle. I'll try and keep my hands out the way. There is a great guide and um, easy to follow dotted line up here to tell you how to wind a bobbin. Again, this is the same on all three models. So we just hook that into there, come up under there and it tells me which way to thread that around that little tensioner there. And then all you've got to do is wind it around the bobbin a few times. And there is a little cutter on these bobbins. They're very clever. And we just pull that into there and cut it off. And that holds the thread. It's nice and taut. It's not going to go anywhere. And all I've got to do is push that bobbin winder unit across. The minute I do that, it will disengage the machine and I can hit the start button. I normally have my speed slide in the middle for winding a bobbin. I don't want to go too slow, but I don't want to go too fast. And that will now wind a bobbin, and away we go. Now you can wind it till it's full, but if you've only got a small project to do, you don't need to wind the whole thing. That just is uh, sometimes wasting thread. Uh, if you do want to stop midstream, I'm kind of happy with that little bit of thread I've got on there, so we might just stop that. But it would stop itself when it's full. It will literally disengage. So let's stop that there, pop that back, take that off, and you can actually use the little cutter on here. I'll just try and get my fingers in here again. Again, I'm not sitting in front of the machine, so it's a bit harder when I'm not in front of it. But we just cut that there, and we can now release that. I'll put the bobbin in in a moment. Now, threading the machine. We're, so it's just coming up through the top guide here, around the back, down. Follow the numbers. There's number three. And here's a big tip, and you should always do this. Always thread the machine with the presser foot in the up position. So your presser foot guide is, or lever is at the back here, on the, or like in the side. Lift the foot, and what that does is it opens the tension and it allows the thread to get into the tension correctly when you're threading. So number three, number four, down to number five, and number six is on the needle bar. At that point on all machines, I like to give the thread a little bit of a pull. So I hold the thread up here, give it a bit of a pull, and that makes sure it's gone in the tension correctly. Then we go up to number seven, and hook that into there, and I just, grab the thread there. There's a little cutter at the back there. I clamp the thread up there, pull it down, that cuts it off. And now to thread the machine, I just put the foot down and I just in one motion, I'm going to do it with my other hand, push that down and the needle is threaded. And all I've got to do then is just grab that thread, pull it through the needle eye and it's all done. Now loading the bobbin, very simple. Take the little plastic cover off, the little uh, grey gray plastic plate there. And there's a little guide to tell you how the bobbin goes in. It comes off anti-clockwise. So we just drop that thread in there. The Brother Quick Set bobbin system is fantastic. So we just hook it in and around. Pull that there, cut it off, and that's it. That's our bobbin threaded. And you do not need to draw the bobbin thread. And we'll just get that little grey plate on. And that's all there is to threading the machine. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at um, just selecting a stitch and, and, the, uh, and how it performs and how it sews. Again, it's the same functionality across all three machines. 
uh, except for the way you would select a stitch. Now on this one we have this little dial and I'm going to set it to stitch number two which is a straight stitch um, and it has like a little tiny couple of stitches at the top here and that means um, it will automatically back tack at the start of my, my seam, which is really good. Saves you having to hit the reverse button. So I'm going to lift the foot. Now, commonly we, we tend to want to take our thread out the back of the foot and that's fine. You can do that. That will mean that the thread will be left with a tail when you start sewing and you won't have a big bunch up of thread underneath. So let's pop that under there. We'll just go down the center here. Again, I'm not using my foot control, but it does come with a foot control if you prefer to use that. I am using my start stop button. So let's just hit the go button. First thing it will do because it's got the automatic back tacking. So is a back tack. And when I get to the end of my seam, all I need to do is hit the reverse button and it will now back tack at the end of the seam and stop with the needle down. And if I was pivoting, for instance, I would lift my foot, I'd come around and take on a different direction. Or if I just want to take the fabric out of the work, I've done my, finished my seam, just hit the needle up button. The machine will stop in the correct position, remove the, the, uh, the fabric. I'm using a pair of scissors, but you can use the, you can use the cutter on the side of the machine if you like, and I'll just cut that little bit off there. And that's all there is to choosing a stitch. Now, if I wanted a, uh, a stretch stitch, for instance, would be, would be needle 10. I would just move across to stitch number 10. It says to use the J foot, and all I need to do is whack that back under there and start sewing. If I really want to go quite fast, the machine does motor along really well. That's using the stretch stitch. We'll stop there, we'll go needle up, and then we could turn around and come to a different direction. Now, so loads of stitches and they're all preset. When you select a particular stitch, it will set itself for you, but you can override it. Now, everyone asks us about buttonholes and that's what I wanted to get into uh, showing you here, a couple of the extra, extra standard features that you expect on every machine. Now, these do particularly good buttonholes and there are in fact three styles. You've got your standard, round end, and a keyhole buttonhole. Now, the secret to doing a buttonhole is to know what size the button is. And on a one-step auto buttonhole like this, it's super easy. These buttonhole feet are fantastic. You just slide that out, take, whoops, take your button that you, you want to um, use to create a buttonhole for and pop it in the back of the foot like that. Now, what I'm gonna do here is take this fabric out. We'll just trim that thread off nice and neat. And we're going to change feet. Now, all the features clip on and off. So you've got a little lever at the back. We just pop that off like so and I'm going to slide my buttonhole foot in and all you've got to do is locate the actual pin on the foot underneath the presser foot, lower the presser foot and it's done. Now, I don't get too carried away with trimming, the, getting the thread all back through the foot. I just make sure that it's not, you know, miles and miles long back there. Um, I know where roughly where I want to put my buttonhole. All I've got to do now is select buttonhole. So I'm going to go across to stitch 14. It tells me to use the A foot, which is the one I've just put on there. And there's a lever back here that we just need to pull down. And let me just trim that bit of thread away there. We don't want that getting in the way. Um, I'm normally not this tidy, but it's good to be tidy if you can. So I'm just going to pop this buttonhole foot under there. I've got my buttonhole selected. I pull the lever down. My button is in the back of the foot. And all I need to do, we'll just slow that down a bit, is just hit the go button. That's it, that's all there is. And I can um, let it do its thing. It will stop when it's finished the buttonhole. And that's the same process on the other machines as well, except on the other models, you get more buttonhole options with the different types of buttonholes that are available. Now notice it will now lock off the stitch. It's tied off the stitch. All I need to do now is lift the foot, or lift the needle rather, just by pressing the needle button. You very rarely ever need to touch the hand wheel on modern machines. Take that out. I'm just going to trim that buttonhole back to there and back to there. Let's go and take this buttonhole foot off the machine. So we'll just unclip it, take our little lever back up. Let's take that away. And I'm going to grab that button out and there's our buttonhole has been done perfectly for the button. Now here's a little tip. If you wanted to now cut that button buttonhole, you do get a little set of um, a little seam ripper with the machine. I'm just gonna grab a pin. I should have got that out before, doesn't matter. And I'm just going to pin across the buttonhole just right at the top and just through there like so. And the reason I've done that is I'm now going to take the little seam ripper that came with it 
and I'm going to cut my buttonhole. So I don't want to trim my stitches, so I'm just ripping that up the center. And because the pin's there, I know I can't go too far. That's it, that's my buttonhole cut, and there it is. And that will fit my buttonhole, button through the buttonhole, all done. Now another key feature that comes with this machine, and people never use this, and you should because it's so easy, is a button sewing foot. How many times do you sew on buttons? To use this little guy, we just take the M, I think it's the M foot, yes, and we just lock that into place there. Now these machines on the back have a feed drop mechanism, so I'm just going to drop the feeders down. I'm going to lift my foot. I'm now going to sew that button onto this piece of fabric. So we just pop this under here like that. Now we got a little tiny couple of holes there for the buttonhole. I just position them where I need them. Put my foot down, go back to a zigzag stitch. It will automatically be set to pretty much suit most, most buttons. And at that point, I just gently turn my wheel by hand once or twice. Yep, I can see I've got that position perfectly. And now if I just run a few stitches there and hit that button, we could lock off if we wanted to, but I, it's pretty firm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Lift my foot, pull that out, trim off the threads. Get my, I always get my hand in the way, sorry about that guys. And that's it, my buttonhole, my button is sewn on beautifully. And that's pretty quick, right? So that's much easier than getting a hand and uh, needle and thread out and doing it by hand. So button sewing is there. You've got your zipper foot. You've got your um, overcasting foot. You've got um, enough stitches to do most of the things you might want to do. Very simple threading. As I said before, metal chassis. Uh, the A-series machines all come with a five-year computer warranty, three-year mechanical warranty, um, and super easy to use, super support as well from Echidna. So that's the A16. That's the entry-level machine. And of course, I should point out when this comes off, it is a free arm machine as well. So you can do your tubular work, sleeves, hems, and that sort of thing. And there is a wide table attachment for it. In fact, one of the great features about Brother is there are so many accessories available for their machines and they're all priced so competitively. So uh, it's easy to add more functionality to your machine. A16, so let's take a look at the A80 next. Okay, so we're now looking at the A80 model, which is the one that sits in the middle of the, uh, the A-series range. And it's the same physical machine. So the size and everything is the same. The threading is the same. The needle threading, the bobbin threading, uh, the tension system is the same. Everything in that respect is the same. So what's the difference? It's, uh, it's basically in features. So essentially you will get a lot more stitches. This is 80 stitches built in and they're all controllable decorative utility stitches. Uh, for example, it has, I think, eight different or nine different buttonhole styles. So a lot more options on buttonholes. It does have a lot of construction stitches, a lot more stretch stitches, some lovely decorative stitches and some little character stitches as well. But there's a few other benefits. You'll see the reverse button actually is um, does a couple of things. You can lock reverse in. So every time you go to start a stitch, it will actually reinforce the stitch at the start and finish of any particular pattern. That's particularly useful when you're doing pattern design. It also comes with an end foot as standard, and the end foot is your standard, um, we call it an applique foot, but it's the foot you use for decorative stitching. It has kind of a grooved out center, so it allows that um, the bulk of a decorative stitch to go through the machine quite quite comfortably. Now, the, the other big difference is it's a very soft touch dial, whereas the other, the A16, um, had kind of almost like a mechanical feel. It wasn't a mechanical machine, but it had a more mechanical feel. This is just simply a jog dial, and when you turn that, select a stitch. If I want stitch, uh, oh, let's go to a, a zigzag stitch. If I want stitch seven, I would just dial up seven on screen. It sets the stitch length and the width. Again, I have full control. It tells me the needle's in the needle down position. The J foot is the foot we should use and uh, everything else is good to go. And if I was to start stitching right now, again, I'm not using my foot control. It does come with a foot control, but I'm choosing to use my start stop button and my speed slide control here. It will go straight into stitching that zigzag stitch. When I get to the end of my seam, if I hit the button, it will just stop with the needle down hit that needle button up, uh, needle up button there, and I can now remove my fabric if I want. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it there for a moment. 
But the other thing that, that, that this does is if I'm doing a decorative stitch and I'm going to, oh, we'll go to stitch number um, 53 just because we can. So let's dial up 53. That's all you've got to do. It's really simple. 53 sets the width, sets the length, tells me to use the end foot. And if I was to push this button now, you'll see the reverse or, or reinforcement stitch is actually on. And that means when I start stitching this particular pattern, it will lock off the stitch at the start. Now let's just say I wanted to finish at the end of one of these patterns and not halfway through it. I also have another button called this, what we call it the fixed stitch. If I hit that while I'm stitching a decorative pattern, the light will turn on and that will tell the machine to stop and lock off at the end of that particular pattern that it's stitching. And that's pretty cool. That's good for when you're pivoting and you're doing some decorative work and you want to finish a complete pattern. Um, it will work that out for you. Um, now I can, of course, just lift my, lift my um, fabric and turn around and pivot to whatever angle I want to go on. Uh, we'll just keep going straight down here. Now, it's, it's very useful when um, you want to turn a corner. So, for example, if I go to stitch number 61 here, which is uh, some lovely little hearts. If I start stitching now, that will now continue on, start stitching the heart. I'm gonna stitch a couple of those hearts out, but I do wanna finish at the end of the third heart. So if I hit that button while I'm stitching, it will finish. And now that's exactly at the end of the heart stitch. And if I turn that around, I can get a perfect pivot and then I can continue on. So I know that I've got that corner is, is perfectly positioned and I'm not going to be overlapping my patterns and we'll we'll turn that on again now when we start the last heart. So now it will actually finish at the end there and I can pivot around if I was sewing on a little patch for instance and I wanted to get it perfectly uh, square we can then start stitching again and I'll do another three and uh, yeah, a really cool feature. You can have some fun with the decorative stitches. So here's my last one and it will stop now at the end of that third heart. I don't have, I'm not doing anything, it's doing its, it, everything itself. Let's just lift that foot and have a look. I'll grab the, my scissors and there we go. So we'll just trim that off there nice and neatly. And so I've got a, a perfect pivot exactly in the right place by using that fixed stitch function. So that's really cool. Um, so again, really the same machine, just a lot more you know, usable, fun stitches. And if you're a creative person, you'll really, really enjoy those. Um, oh, and it also comes with the, uh, the stitch panel that can go up on the top here, just a little bit easier to see. But if we take that off, another nice feature of this machine is it does come, I'll reach over across here, so it comes with a hard case. So that actually will sit over the machine and that comes standard. And uh, just a little bit of protection when you're storing the machine away if you do have to put it away when you're not using it. So that's the A80, a uh, little bit more expensive than the A16, but generally it's probably one of our biggest selling machines and um, for good reason. Uh, so let's, uh, let's now have a look at the A150. Right, let's take a look at the A150 now, and this is the top of the range in the A series machines. And uh, as the name would suggest, a lot more stitches. And um, that's not just the only features though, but it is fun to have a lot of great decorative stitches. So you can see on this con this page up here, or oh, this uh, the plate that comes with the machine, it's broken down into menus. So you've got your basic uh, keypad here, which is all your fundamental stitches, straight stitch, zigzag, um, serpentine stitch, etc. Then you go into the next menu, which gives you all your buttonholes. So a huge range of buttonholes in there, great utility stitches, stitches, decorative stitches, French knot stitches, all sorts of things. Um, then your decorative menus, and you've got three of them. And again, they're really, really nice stitches. And the great thing about this machine is you can program them together and, and make your own um, stitch patterns. So, and that's probably the other key difference here is the screen is much bigger than the A80 or the A16 and you've got more information on there. So for example, if we wanted to stitch, uh, let's take a look and say we're going to stitch, uh, stitch number 09 in that menu number one. We just go to the appropriate menu and we just type in 09 and that will now complete that beautiful little decorative stitch there. Um, it also goes to seven millimeters wide and because it's a bigger screen with more information, you'll notice that the stitch width, it's kind of got a black box behind the number. Again, on all brother machines, whenever there's a black, spot, black box behind a number or a setting, that means that's the factory standard default setting and the stitch length is at two. Now, 
A key function here is there's also uh, another little um, couple of buttons here and you'll see that the reverse indicator is lit up as well as the scissors because this machine actually has a trimming function and I think that's probably one of the main reasons you would you would go to this model over the other two models. So actually I might go back to a straight stitch and I'll show you that trimming function. Uh, to do that I'm going to go back to the standard menu, OK to delete, yes, and I'm just going to go to our center needle position with a uh, automatic back tack function. So we'll lift the presser foot. I'm going to pop my fabric under here and I've got to say I love this feature. I do have the end foot on because uh, that's what I'm using on this machine because I've got all the decorative stitches come standard with the end foot in the box and uh, that's what you would use for all your decorative character stitches. Doesn't matter if in this instance I'm just demonstrating the straight stitch. Now again I've got those two functions turned on so they can be turned on and off there. I'm going to leave them on what it means is when I start stitching, I'm going to slow the speed down a wee, a wee bit, although I have got my foot control plugged in at the moment, so I am going to use my foot control just for, for this, uh, this demonstration, but I don't need to. I can use, use the start stop button, button just as equally. Now, imagine I start stitching and I'll go a little bit slower here. It will automatically back tack at the start of the seam, and when I get to the end of my seam, all I need to do is hit the reverse button and it will automatically back tack. Now, what's more, it will automatically stop trim the thread and lift the needle. Now, all I've got to do now is remove my fabric. The thread is trimmed to a perfect tail length. The bobbin thread has been cut and I can now just put my fabric back under and start stitching. Now, why is that a huge advantage? If you imagine you're stitching on a huge big, a big quilt or a big project on a traditional machine without a trimmer, when you have to stop and reposition and sew somewhere else, you literally have to remove the fabric, get in, trim the thread, reposition your fabric and make sure that you don't have big long tails of thread getting sewn in where you don't want it to get sewn. And that's a really sure way to jam up a machine. With the trimmers, it just doesn't matter. So if we do that again, I'm just going to start sewing right here. It will automatically back tack. And we can speed that up if we like. When we get to the end of the seam, just hit that button. I've got my foot hard on the pedal, pedal now. Nothing's going to happen. I'm still pushing on my pedal because it's, I've told it to trim and stop. It's done that. I can now just move my fabric. There, my thread is cut. There's no bobbin thread left there attached to the machine. And I can just pop my fabric back under and start sewing. That's very useful in dressmaking and quilting and, and particularly sewing things that are just big and cumbersome and bulky. So the trimmers is a, 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 an exclusive feature on this model as opposed to the other two, two models. But otherwise, the rest of the buttons are the same. And um, another feature you've got on here is you do have a settings page that you can get into now. So if I click that little settings page, it allows me to set my own preferences. So for example, I have it set so the needle will always stop in the down position. You might not want that to happen, in which case I can change that. Whoops, let's go down there and move that to stop in the up position. So that means when we start, I'm going to turn that off in a moment, but when we start sewing, the needle will, or when we stop sewing, the needle will stop up. So entirely up to you. But if you want to leave it down, that's probably the most common position and that allows you to do automatic pivoting. Uh, you can turn on a twin needle button as you can on the NV, uh, the A80 series, and that will limit the zigzag width so as it won't let you sew uh, too wide with a twin needle. And there's a whole heap of pages. Now, another nice feature is I can use my speed slide button as a zigzag controller. So it means I can convert it to be a sliding zigzag. So if I was doing um, applique and I wanted to taper my own satin stitch, I, I've got full control while I'm sewing. And I can also use that to get really accurate needle positions. So again, we're talking about more serious sewing functions here. And uh, I'm sure, you know, serious dressmakers and tailors and, and so on would know what, it's, what it means to actually have that full control of your needle position, particularly for straight stitch. Um, let's go across to another page here. Uh, elongation, so I can elongate my decorative uh, patterns that you can see here and I can also change the thread density on them so I can tighten up the satin stitch so it looks a lot neater. And we've also got character spacing. Now, why would you want character spacing? Well, if we take this off and have a look behind, we've got alphabets built into this machine. And there are three different styles of alphabets. Now, they're only small 7mm wide, but they're great for for being able to stitch um, names on kids' clothes, just little sort of naming things on collars, etc. And very easy to use. There's a block, a script, and a, an outline one, which is kind of cool. So let's have a look at what else we've got here. 
uh, sizing, that's just the graphics on the screen. You can mirror image, you can, you can single or repeat different patterns. Again, I, there's a lot more built-in functionality on this screen that uh, you will just love playing with. And um, I could sit here for the next hour going through all that sort of stuff, but uh, this is not the purpose of this particular video. And we've also got fine tune adjustment for the decorative stitches so they get balanced beautifully. Just more control for you as the user. So really, um, that's it. It's got all the same stitching characteristics, same threading, same bobbin system, same size of machine. Uh, again, loads of accessories available. Beautiful quality machines. Um, but it's all this extra control panel information that you've got that does make the difference. But for me, the big one is the scissors, the trimming function, because that's what you get on all your top of the range machines. They all come with, with trimmers. Uh, it does come with the hard cover. Now, I should also point out, that's the same hard cover as the A80 series, um, but I should also point out there is an excellent wide table available for all of these A-series machines. And um, if you really want to convert it to being more of a flatbed. We just take off the free arm attachment there or the little plate. Oops, let's move that out the way. And we can pop this in under here. I'll move this bit of fabric. And I think, look, let me just show you there, there's a couple of little legs that go down. So it's very stable. And that then just sits in there like that and locks into place. So you've got a really lovely work surface and they are an optional attachment that are available for these all three models in, in this range. So, so that's it guys. Um, loads of great features. They're terrific value for the money that you pay for these things. They're, they're awesome. As I mentioned before, um, five year computer warranty, three year mechanical warranty. They're solid, they're robust. They've got a bit of weight to them. They don't bounce around the table and they're virtually bulletproof. The bobbin system is pretty much the same bobbin system as we have in our $10,000 machine. So you're not, you're not being undersold on anything. It's got all the same quality, good quality steel needle plate and um, a metal chassis machine. Uh, just terrific. So hope that information helps you. There's good brochures on our website. There's loads of videos available um, also that, that from, from Brother as well that sort of give you more details. And uh, most importantly, if you have any questions about these machines, um, give us a call, chat to us online, however you need to do it. And right at the start, I also mentioned we have the NV180, which is the sewing and embroidery version of this particular machine. And it has even more features and a beautiful color screen. So uh, it's not, much, not too much more expensive than the A150. So definitely check that out as well. If you think this is the machine for you, be crazy not to look at the one, the NV180 and just do a comparison. Um, again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you found it enjoyable and uh, any questions, get in touch with us. Cheers. Bye.